I'm just not functioning properly. I kind of shot myself in the foot there, didn't I? We've knocked up the pallet table. What, you got the fear already, have you? No, this thing just flapping in my face. You made a bit of a ball up. I'm starting my own small company to rival WH Smith's. What's up, Amade, and you are watching the self-build vlog. We're back on the cart lodge. We're gonna sort out cutting off the ends of the rafters so we can get the fascias on. This one's gonna be a bit of a fascia soffit video. I'm not even gonna pretend I know exactly what I'm doing on this. I've never done it before, but what we're gonna do is we're aiming for a hundred mil basically soffit underneath. That's gonna be a fireball because it needs to have fire protection for going up there. So I'm got hundred here. My face is going to be a 175 bit of wood. We're going to, I've marked this, we've put a, a, a screw there. So down, so down, we're going to string a line, mark all these off, and then we're going to chop them down. Right, that was just getting stupid then. <clears throat> Trying to figure out what we was doing. We put the line underneath and then we done uprights from there with the levels. We, we was gonna cut these above our heads and then we thought that's a bit stupid really. So we're gonna whack the scaffold up. Never done that scaffold before. Hopefully it'd be straightforward. On a side note, I've got all this filled in if you've seen the last episode. The water lines run all the way into the shed. Up there, down here power line or conduit is all the way around here so I still need to pull a power line through but I need to know obviously what size to get and because I had it all open I had the digger I've also run a power line here into the container well it's outside the container at the moment but that is going to be a gym so we're going to clad it make it all look nice let's get cracking on this we've got an hour figure it out we're back, we're back. Uh, I've done a few other bits like since the last time I filmed. But we're just about to crack on with the um, fascias and stuff. So I'll just quickly show you. You might have seen this video already. But we had to dig out around here so I can get the, bot the gullies in for the drainage. The reason why we was doing that is so we could fill this in. So I can get the scaffold down that side as well. Because we've got to put the scaffold up. This scaffold went up. Quite nice. Very, very, very useful. Dan's just cutting the ends of the rafters square down. And then I've got a mark out of that Velux up there. We've done the other ones. That's in a separate video if you haven't seen it already. There's a link. It's all done. I'm not having a very good day today. I marked it out three times wrong. And then I kept on thinking that I'd done it wrong. I'm just not functioning properly. I don't know what's up. I'm gonna stop for a little bit and have like lunch and stuff. We're just setting down up to sort out the um, fascia. I just, I just sat down and figured out what's happening. I'll just quickly show you. Okay, so I put some battens on. This is my eaves tile and then the next one goes smack bang on top of it i've left a little bit of a gap there just because i know it's going to be a little bit uneven going across and i'd rather see it properly than tiny not seeing it and then poking out and stuff like that so i figured out that smaller button at the bottom makes everything better and then these are 25 mil buttons this is a 19 so that's just so it doesn't kick up as much at the end and then here that's where obviously the space is. So I'm going to have this gap here is going to be filled 
by the vent so this is effectively going to sit smack bang on top of that there and then the fascia is going to go all the way from here down here this is 150 millimeters so i've got 180 fascia so we're going down to here and then what we're going to do is route right the back by 10 mil fascia is a 25 mil thick and then we can put the fireboard and tuck it up in here so it'll like hold itself in i'm just using normal rubbishy kind of wood um, for the fascia this is treated I was hoping it would come in brown treated, but it's green, so I'm going to put some creosote on it. So we're going to Creo route coat. these out. Huh? Creosote. Yeah, but you still pronounce it creosote. Creosote. Creosote is uh, the stuff that Tyson has got a license to use in Australia. Yeah. Creosote. 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 No, soap. soap. No, it's, it's still soap. Product. Free of coat. No, it's just a rip-off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what's going on there. And then uh, then it would say it's going to be a bit browny. I'm going to go dark brown. Um, I was going to do it in larch originally, and I found out a place to get some larch, uh, but they said it's like three weeks I had to wait. And as it happened, that was, that was probably about three weeks ago, and I said, oh, I'll, I'll have to go somewhere else. <laughs> And then, uh, obviously, I've, I kind of shot myself in the foot there, didn't I? Anyway, that's what's happening. Okay, so we just had a little bit of a test run. We just routed this here. We've got 6mm route a bit or a 12mm. So this board is 6mm. This is like concrete board, like tile backer board. That's how it's going to go in. So... Dan's going to use this router, it's called a trimming router, but we've lost the guide. So he's just marking on here to clamp a batten down and then he's got a guide that goes all the way down. So he's going to crack on with that and then I'm going to have a little break. It turns out this episode is going to be a bit of a bits of, bits of this, bits of the other because well i haven't shown you how to do it or anything but we just put our drainage in there's a gully there and a gully over there as well uh, that's because what we want to do is get this scaffold up around the back and because this trench was open we basically wanted to get that in so we can put the scaffold on and then the scaffold can stay there without taking it down again basically it's all lean mixed in around there we dropped one in there and then one in there to the pipe that was down the bottom that's the one that i put in when we done the french drain around, around the side it's tea time so we thought we'd try a new feature let us know what you think we've knocked up the pallet table i quite like that we braced it underneath with roofing battens we're gonna have our tea and then we thought we'd try eating some insects because you remember we spoke about it before so today on the menu is buffalo worms they're a bit smaller than a buffalo but they're still worms tomorrow well tomorrow be... no not tomorrow like just next time just next time next time what you got the fear already have you no. <laughs> got the fear already banded crickets they, they're not in a band uh and grasshoppers these are some big boys if you can see them heads and all so that'd be the order right let's go T for two on a build. Yes. No. T for two. T for two on a build. T for two on a build. No biscuits. It needs to you relate to biscuits like... as well. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to relate to like building kind of. That's thing. what T, T for two. On a build. Yeah, but tea for two is like tea and cakes, isn't it? Yeah, but we're not going to do tea and cakes, are we? That's the whole point. <laughs> tea for two on a build. Okay. Tea for two, proper. This is tea for two. Proper. 
we're at, we're at the south build. We're in the field. You can see what's behind us. We've got our tea. We've got our snack. Again, the snack is banded. No, it's not banded. Banded nothing. Banded. It's buffalo worms. Freeze dried. Yeah, freeze dried. Twenty uh, grams worth. Yeah, twenty grams. So, um, I I want to drink my tea, but I need something to wash it down with. Probably, I don't know. Let's get some of these bad boys out. Not really offensive. They've got a weird taste to them. You know you're eating insects. Really? Yeah. Like stick ones. Oh, chip sticks. Mm. Like them. We have to move on to that. Bit of live shit. So I reckon, so we got obviously three, three in the series, we lost a package. Yeah, mealworms. But, but then, then we need something after this, so if anyone's got any ideas. Yeah. Don't just look up the things that taste the most disgusting. We're not doing rotten egg stuff, or that smelly fish. What smelly fish? Oh, the herring from... Sweden. Oh, the rotten herring. Sweden? Oh, yeah, somewhere like that. Yeah, but then when you wet it up, it's like you know that that's rotten guts all wanging around in your mouth, don't you? <laughs> it's mine over mouth. It's strawberries. It's strawberries. That tastes nothing like strawberries. <laughs> At least go for something realistic, yeah. Um, Get your hand out. Can you see him moving? No. That's your wonky eyes. It could be my wonky eyes, yeah. You got, you got all in? What is it? So, T for two, proper. Yeah. And then maybe a theme tune or something. You know? Why have I got to do it? You say T for two, T for two, and then I'll say it hanging back. T, T for two, T for two. Louder. It's picking you up. Yeah, but what am I... What, what am I saying? And in what? Like gangster so, rap? And it, you just T for two, T for two, and then T I'll for go. two. T for two, T for two, T for two, T for two, T for two. That's too long. Why? What do you mean? You just cut in whenever you're ready, like a backdrop. No, but you go T for two, it's T for two. I'll say with Aiden and Dan, and you can say proper. Now it's a race to get on the roof, get the roof on properly. Now, if you remember, we got all these lined up nice when we first put them up. But because it's been exposed for so long, everything's moved and all of the rafters are at different levels now. It's not too bad, but we're going for a three mil tolerance and it transitions across. So there's a couple we're having to pack out. Dan's just packing that one out now by three mil. And then the gable lens, because we put that in first and then the middle and then went across we transitioned and that ends over here by the time it gets to here that one's six mil off at the end so I'm gonna put a six mil packer in there and then when we put the battens on it won't be too harsh skipping up and down and then the tiles will sit on nicer that's the job you might remember I said before that the structure engineers calculations in terms of deflection on roof fouled on one of the measurements and I think it was like very very high wind or something and that's the reason why I was putting in the dwarf oil and I was also going to put in the collar ties at the top then we thought we'll just put noggins in so it's the same principle as the floor if you do obviously mid span it's going to stiffen the whole lot up so we put them in and it's solid now the issue with that is it stops the airflow for the 50 mil gap above these so we've notched out all the way across we've done it with a circular saw it was easier that way um, we tried with a hole first but that was going to take forever so it stiffened everything up now we're ready to obviously get cracking on the actual lane of felt and bands so we've left the fascia off because it's still dry enough put creosote over in the barn and, and done that so it's brown so it looked nicer than the green so we've had to calculate this is under eaves felt it's high performance jazz 
stuff uh, it's uv resistant a lot of people use dpm on this but that's unstable in uv so we've got enough overhang so that's going to hang into the gutter and we can lift this up later and put the fascia on and the vents now this you can see the ripple that goes down there when you put felt on or anything like this it needs to have a sag in it just in case any water gets through then it will come away from the rafters go to the center and drip all the way through so you should never put your felt on tight as a drum like they did over there so professional roofers for you they done it as tight as a drum so that means basically when if any water got through and it wanted to run down there's a good chance that it's going to run towards the counter bands that are on there as well and through the nail holes whereas on this obviously the nail holes are going to go through the battens into the rafters but if any get water gets through it's going to be directed straight to the middle away from any possible holes that are in there from the nails so we're going to wet the felt on now it's uh, a little bit awkward and this is a shaky thing um, obviously we need to drape it across so We'll see how we get on. I don't know. Can I put you on a time lapse? Maybe I'll pop you up on top of the container and you can watch us. Okay, next day we've got our first run on. So we've gauged this. Uh, it's going to be a gauge of 100 millimeters. So that means from the top of one button to the top of the next button it is 100 mil. That's for my clay plain tiles. So we're not putting on all of our buttons straight away. We're just getting up the roof basically so we can cover it as soon as we can. These are 400 mil spacings. I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so first things first, we strung a line all the way across to get this button proper level relative to itself then we cut these so the top of this button to the top of that button is 400 mil so we can fill in between later these get it relatively on measurement so what we do is we put these in just to begin with we cut the length of the button and then I come across and now Dan measures every single one and he has to move it up and down, maybe like one mil or two mil. The reason why you do that is if you have a cumulative error, just say you add it in the center, one millimeter all the way up, by the time you get up there, you'll be 45 mil off. So it'll go like that on your tiles. You don't want that, do you? <laughs> okay, fixings uh we are going ring shank nails into the actual rafters now recommendation is that you go 40 mil into the rafters so we've got 25 mil battens so that means that we'd need 65 mil ring shanks or just 65 mil nails but we're using ring shanks so that means that they're going to hold in tighter anyway and because we're going for a clay play plain tiled roof we've got 100 mil gauge so there's actually 70 percent more fixings than you would have on a uh, concrete interlocking tile roof so 51 mil that's going to be fine for us no problem the battens are 25 by 38 so the smaller that they are the more chance they're going to sag and twist and everything like that so that's the reason why we now as we go across instead of nailing one end then the other and then just going mental and it just goes banana it was all going so well we got the second batten and felt run on and then we put the third one on it was just stapled the wind picked up 
it just tore it straight down. So me and Dan were struggling to get it up for the rest of the way. And then, uh, yeah, almost got flapped off the roof. Hey, I never struggle to get it up. <laughs> so we was, uh, it, it, it was horrible. At one point, I just had the right up. I just want to get off the roof. Next minute, I'm just, it fits a laughter with this thing just flapping in the face. I'm still talking about the felt, by the way. <laughs> so we've come inside, we've cut the ends of these rafters, and then I've realised we made a bit of a bolt up. So when we've done these, I, obviously it was so long ago, we just put one screw in at the top just in case we, could, we needed to move them. And then I forgot that we need, had to nail them as well. So what's happened is, as they've dried, it's all twisted. So now we are having to put these little blocks in just to pull them together so it'll be easier when I put a little bit of the ceiling across here and some proper collar ties. And then this is just in the way of this brace now. So Dan's putting this cross bracing back on so we can take this out and then eventually I'm going to take these off and put the metal straps just like I've done in the barn. And now it's raining and it's windy and it's horrible. Why does it have to happen? Putting the roof on? Oh, right, okay. How about some stormy weather for you? Explain yourself, Dan. Well, I'll explain myself. <laughs> Aidan likes to put loads, you'll see in these videos, that he has about 12 pencils behind his ears at certain points. <laughs> they obviously fall out across the floor. I go around and pick them up. Um, I'm starting my own small company to rival WH Smiths. I should be starting to sell gifts cards out of that side of the pocket as well. Um, possibly some sellotape from this one here. But at the moment, we're just their pencils. Couldn't have chose the worst time to put the roof on. It's like a storm, basically. It's raining a little bit at the moment. It's really windy. Thankfully, that stayed on, but it's getting even windier later today. So, you can see it flapping, yeah. Uh, we're going to get the rest of the battens on here just to make sure that this stays on. And then, hopefully, the wind will die down tomorrow. We'll do the other side, but I'm not going to be filming the rest of today. Just gonna be getting on with it and it's gonna be a horrible day horrible i lied i realized that i can pop you in the barn and then uh you're out of the weather don't destroy my camera a little bit of music and time lapse yeah Dan was just sweeping off the water from the rain from last night. Hopefully that won't be happening too long now because um, we might be able to get this covered in by the end of today. So we've gone all the way up. There's a bit at the top that we haven't done because the felt needs to obviously go both sides and we wanted to get the other side done first. I'll just talk you through this a little bit. Now I haven't done a how-to video because I don't really know how to do it because this is the first time I've done it. But obviously we've done 400 battens all the way up. They went across the openings for the V-luxes, so that gives you foot holding and everything and keeps the felt in place. It's all nice. The ones that 400 mil, we 
measured them accurately and then the ones in between it was just too anal to go 100 mil all the way so we've allowed the variation in it because the tiles are handmade anyway so well, I believe they're handmade so they're never going to be perfect so we just cut these little blocks we just put them in and then um, it does vary very slightly up there some of them are like three or four mil off from the one below but it's okay this um, is called undercloaking so we measured off the bottom here put a string line off the top we put a batten out at the end up there and then strung the line so we could get this level all the way up this is where you bed your tiles on a bit of mortar basically um, so clout now top and bottom and then you go with your nails all the way through these battens don't go all the way to the end that's the crack when we put the felt on as well and this we get a chalk line we measure up and we string it all the way along and then we know exactly where the felt needs to be so it doesn't end up going skew with off the off the roof and as well as that the sags they should be 10 to 20 mil over here is probably a little bit more i don't know whether you can see but we've got it a little bit tighter over there so obviously this isn't really too much of an issue it's still going to work so it's all good so we just crack on with this side of the roof now uh, we've just got a few more blocks to go in at the top we'll sort that out and then uh, we'll check the level of these we've already done them once but we need to double check it because we've twisted these rafters a little bit uh, we want to get as close as possible maybe like three mil basically tolerance do that then the eaves felt down here felt batten hopefully we get all the way over the top that's the jazz i think i'm going to leave it there if you've made it this far well done i've got a feeling this is going to be quite a long one so you might as well give us a thumbs up remember to comment down below for the youtube algorithm thanks for watching i'll see you later